Welcome to In the Server Room. I am Edward Stover. Today we are going to look at viruses and antivirus software. I will show you some of the things that can happen if you are unfortunate enough to load and run a virus on your system. I will also demonstrate a free antivirus software that I recommend. The first thing I'm going to demonstrate to you today is a kind of virus called a hoax. A hoax is a virus that tricks you into installing it by making you think that there's something that you need to do to achieve some goal. In this case, you'll be browsing the internet and suddenly you'll see a system folder like this and instead of it just being a static page as you see here, it'll show all kinds of activity, it'll say something along the lines of your computer is infected, and it will offer you a solution by a software that is suddenly available for you to, uh, to execute. Um, the, the software will look like this icon here. Um, it might even tell you that all you need to do is just install this, and so if you do, it suddenly says Security Shield has been installed successfully, and now you've got a virus. The virus in this case looks like some kind of a scanner, like it's going to find all kinds of bad things that are on your system. What's interesting about this particular system is that it was just installed and it has all of the security patches on it, so there's no way that it has a virus because the, br the browser has only been used to update the system. And here it says that it's found 44 infections. Well, I know that that's not true in this case. If I decide to try to ignore it and I continue unprotected, are you sure you want to continue unprotected? I say yes. If I close this window, suddenly that goes away. I'm going to close the browser, close everything out. Uh-oh, now down here it says security shield warning spyware IE monster process is found. Of course, this is bogus. If I click on this, it opens a big window, and suddenly I have the idea that I need to spend $79.95 to solve all the problems. This is a if you made the mistake of spending $79.95 to register your copy of Security Shield so that you'd have supported software, you would be wasting your money. This software will never find viruses because that's not what it's programmed to do. It's just programmed to bother you until you spend the money. I might add there's plenty of websites out there that give explanations on how to uninstall this software because once it's on your system it can be a challenge to get rid of it. Now I'd like to show you a great solution for people who have no money to spend on virus protection. There is a website that's provided by Microsoft. It's Microsoft.com slash security underscore essentials. Here's the URL right there. Okay, I they have a free virus scan. It's quite good. I'm going to demonstrate it to you now. I'm going to actually install it on this fresh operating system. This operating system has never been used, so it has nothing on it. Uh, I accept. Do not want to join the program. Okay, it's going to turn on my firewall and then it's going to install. It asks if you want to scan your computer for potential threats. I'm going to say OK. And then the first thing it does is it installs the latest virus and spyware definitions from Microsoft. So it begins looking for that on the internet and then it downloads that. That'll take about a minute. Okay, so it's going to scan my entire operating system at this point. I actually don't want it to do that. I'm going to request that it does a custom scan because I have a directory with suspicious files in it. I'm going to go into that directory now and count how many files there are in it. there are 113 files. So let's see how many files there will be after Microsoft's Security Essentials has gone through them. Now I just picked random viruses that I was able to find. Found something. So show the details and here you can see that it has found a lot of files. So it's 
that I should remove or disinfect. Now I want to see how many files remain once this action is finished. There it goes. It wasn't able to do absolutely everything. Got a little error message there. Close. It's asking if I want to send one of the files that it found off to Microsoft for analysis. I will click send so that it can do that. I'm going to rescan that directory. Actually, let's see how many files are in the directory now. Now there's 46 files. So it has directory again for scan. Okay, so now I'm going to show the details again. And here it's talking about all of these have the word disinfect. I'm going to switch them to remove. So there we go. Now we removed, closed. Let's see how many files there are now. Now there were 46. We started with 113 and we're down to 32 files. Uh, go to this website, virustotal.com, and you can send them a file and ask them to ha scan it for you. The nice thing about this uh, website is it will use multiple programs to determine whether or not a file is a virus. So it works just by sending them the file. In this case, it says it's a file that's already been submitted. You could reanalyze the file. Or you could view the last report. I'm going to reanalyze in this case. Starting its analysis, and you can see here that it's working with different programs. It's got AVG, Dr. Webb, F Secure, McAfee, Norman, and Protect, the Hacker, VBA32, VIPIRE. So, in fact, here's Microsoft. There you can see Microsoft does not determine that that is a virus. 0.7% of the programs that it used to determine whether or not that was a virus file came back with the decision that yes, that is in fact a virus file. So 30. Okay, we have seen an example of how Microsoft Security Essentials uh, can be used to scan files that are currently on the file system and determine whether there are viruses there. One thing that Microsoft Security Essentials can also do is actively scan your system as you're using it. So for example, if you're using your browser and you go to a website that is pushing some kind of a, uh, a virus, such as this one, the program will warn you that it has determined that there is a potential threat. You can just click clean the computer, you can show the details, and uh, apply the actions that you want, remove, quarantine, etc. So um, this is a great program and it's absolutely free. virus hoping I can catch a screenshot of it let's see I think this one is gonna do some badass stuff so let's give it a shot yeah there's my screenshot now watch what this thing does to the operating system I close this window it can't display the background uh, it, if you look here this is corrupted so this looks pretty bad all right, let's take a look at what that message is. This is the message over here. It says, all files are encrypted. Please read crypted.txt. And then it gives you a URL and an email address and an ICQ. I, this guy is not very kind. If you go back to the operating system, this is what it's done to it. Disabled a lot of things. Here's the crypted.txt. All your files are encrypted. If you wish to decode files, buy the decoder. Cost of the decoder uh, of $89. How to buy, and then he goes on. OK, 
Okay, we're going to run another virus and see what damage this one does to the computer. This one's called Trojan Ransom Win32 SCOMAS. You can see it's unpacking and then warning. This computer has been locked. You must receive a key for unlocking and continuous continuations of use of this computer. You can choose a country. I don't see the United States as one of the ones that we can choose from, so I'll pick one that speaks English, Great Britain. Send SMS to, with the text of this to this number. I'll receive an SMS with the unlock key. What if you click next? Wrong key with some strange code, and then you're kicked out of your own operating system. So we'll try to get back in. <laughs> You're downloading programs off the internet that are supposed to be doing things and you're not sure if they're going to do the things they're supposed to do, here's probably the reason why you shouldn't be doing that activity. Again, this computer has been locked. You must receive a key for unlocking and continuations of use of this computer. So basically you're screwed. <laughs> if you click cancel, logged out again. People often ask me what are the ways in which a system can be infected with a virus. I think that is because many people are embarrassed by their browsing habits. Porn. But judging by the many personal computers that I have fixed in my career, I can tell you that most viruses got on the system and were run because someone wanted to try a program that promised something of value for nothing. Examples, software cracks, key gens, phone card code generators, free nude pictures of a famous movie star, a presentation of silly pictures with music. Browsing porn can infect your computer with a virus, but browsing most any website can do the same thing. I think you are only slightly more likely to infect your computer with a virus by browsing porn than by browsing other content. I hope this video helps you to keep your system clean of viruses in the future. If you have a story about a virus that disrupted your computing life, please share it in the comments section below. Thank you for visiting me in the server room. Please rate this video. See you soon.